We are Chinable Academy. We're a training and resources sharing platform. We offer the courses, workshops, webinars about China business, e-commerce, marketing, etc. And um, China Speed is powered by Chinable Academy. And we will have this uh, webinar bi-weekly. For each episode, we will in invite one guest for each episode from the China e-commerce industry and also the marketing industry. So our guests will come from like um, e-commerce marketplace uh, or the social platforms or like uh, KOLs or MCNs, etc. So just uh, you can go to our website chinableacademy.com and you will see all the upcoming events. So about the webinar, so this webinar will last for around an hour and during the webinar, please mute yourself and also turn off your camera. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and we will also post a replay video on our website. So if you uh, want to uh, rewatch it, you can also uh, go to our website, maybe tomorrow or next week to check the replay video. And if you have any questions about the webinar, you can use the chat tab to ask the questions. So you can ask any questions and we will answer all the questions during the Q&A session at the end of the event. And for any other queries, you can also contact our speaker, Chloe, directly. So uh, I will also just announce our next event, the, the second episode of the China Speed series of webinar, which we will be uh, have on June 10th. And for the second episode, we are very happy to invite uh, our guest from Jessica's Secret. So Jessica's Secret is an app that connects global travel retail industry and also the Chinese outbound tourists. So you're, if you're in the travel retail industry or if you're interested to learn how to attract Chinese tourists, you can also come to our um, second webinar. You can also find the registration link on our website. So. Um, Next, maybe uh, Chloe, maybe you can just uh, introduce yourself a bit or, uh, and also about the Tmall Global because uh, I'm not sure, I think everyone should be very familiar with Tmall Global, but in case anyone is not so familiar, just introduce a bit. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Miro, for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, so my name is Chloe Gonzalez. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm working for Timo Global and my role is a business development manager. So basically I'm helping uh, European brands onto the China market and open flagship stores on Timo Global. Uh, I used to be based in China for, for three years, uh, but now I am based in our Paris office and focusing on French and Israel brands. So I'm not sure uh, you know, who in the audience is really familiar with the uh, Alibaba and Tmall ecosystem. So I'm just gonna put a few slides to give a bit more background about the company and where is Tmall uh, fitting into this ecosystem. Um, so Alibaba's mission and vision is to build the infrastructure of commerce and to make it easy to do business anywhere. So this is a big ecosystem of Alibaba. Um, coming from Europe, uh, usually brands think that Alibaba is only about e-commerce, but it's actually so much more than that. Uh, so of course, core commerce is a big part of uh, the company. We have platforms like Taba, which is C2C, Timo for B2C, Timo Global for cross-border B2C. Um, we have Alibaba.com for wholesale, 1688 for wholesale, but specifically for China. We have platforms like AliExpress, Lazada for Southeast Asia, Suntaba for rural China, Zhuhuaswan, which is a type of Groupon. We also have a big, big, big pillar of uh, digital media and entertainment. So Yoku, which is like the YouTube of China, Alibaba Pictures, Weibo, etc. We also have uh, local services with uh, Fresh Hippo, which is a uh, fresh supermarket. Um, we have Tao Piao Piao for buying cinema ticket, Fliggy, like the travel platform, Amap, LMA for food delivery. And in order to, you know, uh, uh, manage all those big three pillars, uh, we have payments with Alipay. So basically all the transactions between uh, all this ecosystem are made through this payment platform. We also have a partner, um, well, logistic arm of Alibaba is Sanya, and they use local partners to deliver all the packages. And we also have Alimama, uh, which is a very 
big important part of uh, the company because basically one consumer across this whole ecosystem has what we call one unique ID. So meaning if a consumer goes on Yuku to watch a video or goes on Tmall or buy something on Freshipo, uh, everything is connected and brands can have access to those data to do uh, really good targeting. And last but not least, Alibaba is also uh, having a cloud uh, computing uh, business. Um, Alibaba Cloud is the first cloud provider uh, in, in uh, China and the third one in the world. So that's basically the whole Alibaba ecosystem. And Tmall, more specifically, is a B2C platform. It's, it's the biggest, actually, B2C platform in China. Uh, we have more than 700 million uh, consumers. And basically, Tmall is for brands that are already established in China. So you can see here two screenshots of Dyson or Estee Lauders. So these are brands that you know have been in China for a while, already have you know registered their products, and you know already doing business and can actually sell offline in China. Um, so on Tmall, uh, consumers are really really young. Um, more than 60% are under 30 years old. 90% of the transactions are made on mobile, and there are more than 20, 20 million sorry, comments and sharings every day because uh, Tmall is more than just an e-commerce platform. It's actually an, entertaining, an entertainment platform. You can have access to a lot of videos and live streaming. So this is a very uh, strong part uh, of, uh, of Tmall, which is really different from the platform that we can have uh, overseas. And Timo Global, uh, what is the difference? Basically, Timo Global is uh, for cross-border, meaning that only international brands are present on Timo Global. Timo Classic is for Chinese brands and international brands, but Timo Global is only for international brands. And usually, um, the brands on Timo Global, it's really the first step into the China market. 80% uh, of the brand do their first China entry on the platform. And today we have more than 25,000 international brands from more than 92 uh, countries and regions across 5,100 categories. And Timo Global has a lot of different business model. We have flagship store model. We also have a direct purchase. Uh, we also have a consignment model. So um, I won't go into details on all the different um, business model, but basically our, our goal is to help uh, European or just Western brands in general enter the China market and help them reach our 700 uh, million consumers. Um, so in terms of consumer trends on TMG, I think the main particularity compared to uh, Timo Classic is that the consumers are middle class consumers, meaning people who are not really price sensitive and are actually looking for uh, you know, foreign products that are very good quality. Um, so on Timo Global, uh, one of the key consumers are, are, are Generation Z, so they are less than 25 years old uh, and they really love uh, you know uh, traveling and they follow a lot of bloggers on social media they really want the latest niche products and products that they cannot obviously find in china and we have a new trend also coming is that uh, consumers from less developed areas are also growing a lot um, and here you can see uh, um, like how a flagship store on timo global uh, look like so basically the brand is putting you know, all the branding she wants in the platform, putting her products, her videos, um, all the... Si un joueur comme lui a accepté d'être dans notre public. Here it's actually a, a, a advertising they made on TV for France and they actually put it in their Timo Global stores. So it's really a, a channel for, for the brand to get their product out there, but also build their brand and build their image in the China market. Okay, thanks for the introduction. I think Alibaba is now more than just a company. It's like a ecosystem. Like on our daily life, we will be using like all of this kind of apps under Alibaba Group. So I think um, brands are very concerned about um, the most concerned thing now is the COVID-19 crisis. So how can Tmall Global, this platform help uh, our overseas brands to react to this crisis and how can you help them recover and also to grow uh, in China market? 
Sure. So you have a good point. Um, you know, COVID-19 has been impacting a lot uh, the retail in China. Um, actually, e-commerce has been a bright spot, let's say, for, for China because, you know, the economy has been slowing. Um, I think the GDP shrunk back like more than 6% from a year ago uh, and the retail was significantly impacted. Uh, but e-commerce really showed resilience because people were stuck home and it was one of the only ways they could actually get uh, things delivered to, to their home. So here you can see a little graph that shows uh, you know, the different fluctuation and, and, uh, and the fact that it was a really high growth before the COVID-19 and it's still growing even more post COVID-19. So which is something that is uh, a good opportunity for, for brands to, to know about. And for, for Timo Global, uh, you know, we really wanted to, to show support to our brands, to brands that were already in China, um, you know, that just joined the platform and had this uh, type of uh, hit um, because, you know, some of, uh, some of, the, of the brands, like there was a really high uh, peak of, uh, of sales for products like healthcare and food and things for home. Uh, but for some brands that just, you know, started, uh, it was a bit hard for them to, you know, financially, uh, you know, uh, manage all the costs. So we've provided a free service fee, service fee for um, people, or uh, brands who entered uh, during this period and also brands that are entering now. Until July, you can get still, still have the free uh, service fee, which is represent uh, 30,000 to 60,000 RMB. We also provided low interest loans, um, you know, to make sure that uh, brands in need and, and distributors in need could uh, still continue their um, their stores and also logistics subsidies um, because, you know, during that timing, um, especially during the, the COVID, not all um, orders could be delivered as quickly. So we wanted to make sure that the fees were not too high. And um, we also provided some uh, helps uh, to, to help uh, brands have more uh, turnover during that period. And for brands who wanted to enter during that period, because there was a really strong demand, for example, of health products, we made sure that they could onboard quite, quite quickly. So basically, uh, we have the registration in one click now. I will share a bit more uh, after, but we have a platform called the Merchant Channel, where now the brand can actually connect and put all the information and register to the platform and we will come back to them and they could onboard very quickly. And the processing time is also very uh, shortened during that period. So now if a brand is interested in, in, in working uh, with Timo Global, uh, we can make sure that they open the store on, in 30 days. So these were some of the initiatives from Timo Global during that period. And um, in China, we, we always say that crisis brings new opportunities because the word crisis, Weiji, actually has danger, but opportunity inside. So here you can see, you know, the different um, uh, consumer trends according to um, the, the, the time of, uh, of the epidemic. So first, you know, when people were home quarantined and they were fighting the, the, the pandemic, uh, in terms of trends, of course, there was huge demand of medical supplies daily necessities, uh, fresh food, and everything that people would need to cook at home and, uh, you know, um, like things that, that would entertain them while they were at home. And then once they were able to go out, and um, I think there was a really strong uh, health consciousness. Uh, people really want to uh, cook more at home and eat more healthy. Um, and that's why there have been uh, consumer trends in those uh, subcategories, so infant care, health supplements, etc. Um, but the positive thing is that um, right after uh, people uh, the, the lockdown was over um, we had the 3.3 uh, 3, like um, the Women's Day um, campaign 3.8 we call it and it's been a very very big spike um, and um, during that campaign there was a lot of uh, new products that performed really well like cat snacks, bird's nest, molar sticks so it was very really, uh, good for brands to, to continue uh, develop uh, on Timo Global. And overall, I think post-COVID, uh, the sentiment is very positive. Um, we've seen a lot of study, uh, you know, post-COVID in China, and a lot of people actually say they will keep on to increase their spending, um, especially because a lot of people, uh, you know, they cannot travel abroad. So um, we expect that a lot of people are actually going to 
use uh, the money they haven't spent on travel to uh, e-commerce. And um, we had also the, um, the, so I said the Women's Day campaign, so that was a really good increase, 23% year on year. Um, a, big a big trend during that period was live streaming. Um, I'm sure you, you've heard about live streaming in China, but it's a really good, big trend. Yeah, even crazy. <laughs> Even before uh, the COVID and even more during and after, uh, on Taobao, there is more than 150,000 hours of content, of video live streaming that are uh, putting out there every day. So it's a very, very good uh, way for brands to, um, you know, actually, um, you know, put their product out there and, and positive about their uh talk positive about their brands so yeah in, in general i think the sentiment is very positive right now and we're really seeing a recovery and i think uh, it's a very good opportunity uh, for international brands that want to to enter the market okay thank you i think the the offer that the offer is until july right uh, yes, the special exactly. offer you mentioned yes. i think that's very uh, interesting and that's the, like the free service fee and also the logistics support that will be very helpful for brands, especially the mm -hmm. brands that are new uh, to market, are newly launched uh, on Tmall. So, um, and uh, we know that uh, recently, I also wrote about this, that recently Tmall announced that they have like a new um, program called 1000 New Brand Program. So they say that they are aiming to add 1000 new brands uh, onto the platform within the 12 months. And uh, they will have like this incubation center or incubation program for these new brands to help them to grow. So maybe you can talk about uh, this, talk a bit more about this. Sure. So, um, yeah, Timo Global's goal, again, is really to help, uh, you know, foreign brands enter the China market. And so this new 1000 uh, brand plan is actually part of a larger initiative. Um, you know, uh, a few years ago at the Export Expo, Alibaba, uh, you know, said they would bring 200 billion US dollar worth of goods uh, to China. So this is actually part of, of this program. And basically, this type of initiative is to help first the brands that are entering the China market that are not yet there so um, we have now English language uh, customer service and self-service registration system for brands uh, the merchant channel I was mentioning about so it's very easy and quick for brands to actually enter uh, before that you know you had to talk with BD like myself and we had to check uh, like a, we had to prepare a lot and it was not as smooth let's say as, mm -hmm. as it is now. So again, in 30 days now, a brand can actually open a store. So it's way quicker for brands who are entering the China market. And for brands who are already in the China market, you mentioned about the incubation center, that's true. Uh, we really want to make sure that brands who are uh, you know, opening on Timo Global can actually flourish. Um, so we're putting in place a lot of different initiatives and campaigns uh, for them to to help them, uh, you know, flourish in China. So it can be programs like Supernova. Um, we call it Xin uh, Mingming in in Chinese to to make sure that they can achieve really good GMV. Um, we can also help uh, like brands that are just starting have specific campaigns for new brands to help them flourish. Um, and also we yeah we want to help them have a really good GMV. Uh, that's really our goal and Timo Global is not not just having like a lot of brands open but actually have them uh, succeed on the platform so that's basically uh, the plan for for that and in terms of products that we are looking for um so we we are divided in a lot of different categories the main categories are cosmetics mother and baby uh, health and food and then fashion but actually nowadays um i think we really see um, a new like new subcategories that are growing a lot. So um, for example, uh, men's skincare or product for pregnant women or pet food, uh, beauty tools, um, health and, and wellness uh, products. So uh, I cannot tell you, you know, which brands can like, um, which um, like we, we welcome a lot of different brands. What I'm saying is that as long as your product is actually quite niche and quite interesting and very different, this is a very strong potential for, for this brand uh, in China. Um, and it's very easy also to create a new trends. So we, we, um, we are, you know, 
uh, studying what are the trends in China based on the sales on Taobao, but we are also trying to create new trends with the brand that are onboarding. So for example, right now, some of the trend uh, products are like beauty tools, I said men's skincare, but also like Japanese journal or like some uh, food from Africa. So what uh, brands should keep in mind is that um, the more your product is innovative, uh, the more it's really have a really good quality and the more you can customize it for the Chinese market, the more you actually have chance uh, to, to, to succeed in China. So yeah, these are the things that you can uh, keep in mind for, for this program. And as I mentioned, um, we have now have an English platform for to help brands enter uh, the China market. So this is a merchant channel. Uh, you can apply very quickly. Um, and once we receive your, your application, one BD like myself, uh, if it's part of my category, because I focus on mother and baby, for example, you will receive a one-to-one -one expert to, to talk with you and, and help you, uh, you know, define what will be the strategy and also help you find a partner. Uh, we call them TP, Timo Partner, uh, so they can help you, uh, you know, with uh, the operations and the marketing, etc. So that's basically uh, how we can help uh, brands enter China. Okay, so if anyone is interested, you can just scan the QR code to fill in the form or you can just uh, reach out to yeah, Chloe so. directly or you can just ask any questions today to right. yeah Chloe will answer them at the end of this webinar so um, so I think this incubation program is very interesting for uh, new brands to to enter China market so um, I wonder um, what do you think uh, new brands, because you, you actually talk to a lot of new brands, uh, no matter in Europe or in other countries. So what do you think the new brands should learn about before they enter China? What things do they need to know uh, before they come to China? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very important to to understand China before coming to the market. And I think your platform, actually, China Ball Academy, is going to be very useful. Because uh, I always get a lot of questions, uh, you know, for, from European brands. You know, they, they know it's a very big market, but they don't really understand it. So um, I think the first thing to understand when you want to enter China is that uh, retail is now entertainment. It's super different from what we have overseas when you go on Amazon or like e-commerce website when you need something. But actually in China, people, for example, on Taba and Tmall, they connect seven to eight times per day. Even though they don't know what they want to buy exactly, there's just so much content, videos, live streaming, they can do so much uh, and discover so many things that they, they come to be entertained. So that's really something to keep in mind because when you, you open your store uh, on Tmall, you have a lot of marketing possibilities, uh, you know, to, to be creative and to get your brand known. Um, so we talk about Taone, Taowai. So marketing yeah, the is, shop is not a, like a standalone and, shop. It's actually exactly. connected to all the other functions or the other social platforms. Exactly. So it's very important to understand that, that content marketing inside actually this e-commerce platform is very important. I think another thing to understand is that Chinese consumers have changed a lot uh, and China also has changed a lot. So here you can see pictures, uh, you know, from, uh, from uh, Hangzhou and uh, Chinese consumers, uh, maybe like 50 years back. And today, um, you know, like, First, the country has changed a lot. Um, there are more than, um, I think, 200 cities that have, 260 cities that have more than 1 million people. Mm -hmm. And Chinese consumers have become, uh, you know, very, very sophisticated, very trendy, very modern. Um, so that's something to, to understand. Uh, actually, some key words that would uh, define Chinese consumers, as I said, sophisticated, they travel a lot, um, they value deal, they're, you know, they want healthy products, um, lifestyle products, uh, and very quality also products. So this is a, some keywords to, to keep in mind when you want to understand Chinese consumers. But that's not that easy, because actually, you know, we mentioned about Timo having 700 million uh, consumers. It's a whole lot of people, it's very a lot of people. And, you need to identify within these 700 million people 
who are the ones that are fitting your brand, who is your target audience. So here you can see a little sum up of uh, the strategic consumer segment on, on Timo, uh, like uh, white colors, you have super moms, so really one product for, for the baby, uh, you have generation Z, um, you know, you have blue colors. So it's very important to understand that all those type of consumers have different needs. They have different, um, they use different platforms to browse products. Um, so it's very important when you enter China to, to make a lot of study about who would be your target audience because it can be very different from uh, the audience you have overseas. Um, I think the best uh, example to, to, uh, to illustrate that is, for example, the cognac uh, from Moet in the sea. Um, so cognac is a very strong alcohol. And uh, in the US, I think their, their main audience is people always like like 55 years old you know uh, uh, smoking a cigar but in china a cognac of um, what in is actually their their, their audience is between 18 to 25 years old so it's completely wow. different from what they are overseas so it's very important uh, for you to to remember that um, there's a lot of different clusters there's a lot of different consumers and it's very important to target the right uh, audience and this can be very easily done uh, with Timol and all the ana analytics and all the Alimama um, tools and um, when you know when you when you want to know about your consumer, it's uh, important to know about their routine as well. Um, they use completely different apps to of, uh, compared to what we have uh, overseas. Uh, first, they have a lot of uh, power app like Taobao. You can do, uh, you can shop for your groceries. You can uh, buy plane tickets. Uh, you can you know pay and, and watch videos. So it's very really important to see that they have a really different, different uh, lifestyle. So they will check their social network a lot. They will use Alipay to order food and tabs. Um, they will go to uh, Taobao and Tmall to, to browse videos, not uh, actually to buy obviously, but just to you know um, stream and uh, and see what's uh, what's interesting there and they will open again i think there's a very big peak uh, at 10 p.m when people are back home yeah. uh, they love you know <laughs> looking at the uh, table again and, and watch some videos and maybe then uh, buy some products so it's very different from what we have overseas and it's interesting to to understand it yeah i think your your daily routine is really interesting i think it's it's exactly like my daily routine. It's like it's like you're describing my daily life. It's very it's very funny. Um, and I also want to say that you you mentioned about um, the consumer segments, and I, I think this is a very important thing for overseas brands to understand because we know many people uh, are talking about how to focus on Gen Z, how to find like millennials generation, but there are actually a lot of other consumer segments that you are missing. For example, the, you mentioned the small town use. Uh, I think in Chinese we call it xiao zhen qing yan. This is actually a, a big group of the consumers. Many brands are missing because this group of people, they have uh, a lot of leisure time, they, they have a lot of disposable income, and they are looking for, because they, they may live in the lower tier cities and they don't have the access to these uh, big brands or overseas brands like uh, people who live in the first or second tier cities so they they actually have a huge demand for this high quality overseas products which they can only find it on the e-commerce platforms like on Tmall global so this yeah. group is actually uh, i think some brands you can try to you know uh, think uh, who are your real target customer and you may be uh, mm. like you can you can find your strategy to target this uh, small town youth and also the like the gray hair generation you also mentioned like the silver generation which is like a hot keywords that we are talking about the silver generation the silver, silver economy because like i i see my own parents and my own even grandparents who That's live in like fourth or fifth tier cities a small town they all use like we chat to communicate with their friends and they use Taobao to buy everything online. It's like a huge group that you're missing and they don't really, they are not really familiar with like overseas brands or the difference between overseas brands or Chinese brands. They don't really know how to choose, but they are also looking for some high quality products to improve their life, to have a better life. So I think this is also a group of people that 
uh, brands are always missing. So I think this is a very interesting point that, that yeah, you talked about. So um, maybe because we have already talked about the incubation plan and also how Timor can help um, our overseas brands to grow. So maybe um, uh, if you can, um, like, I don't know, because I don't know which brands or which products our audience are um, selling. So maybe you can uh, give us some case studies that you uh, talked about before, you talked to before, uh, maybe uh, better be from different categories of the products. This sure. case study. Was good. So yeah, as I mentioned, we have a lot of different categories on Timo Global and each category have their own uh, case study. Uh, I focus, for example, on mother and baby. So if you're a mother and baby brand, I, I would give you, uh, you know, more details into some success, case, success cases. So here I just sum up three cases from different categories. First one, mother and baby. And this brand is from France um, and, and name is Ilado. And basically, Lado is actually a very small company. Um, they're only five years old, and it was created by two moms. And basically, they created uh, necklaces um, that you would put around uh, your neck and on, put on your belly to smoothen a bit the baby. So there's a little sound in in the in the necklace that is supposed to really help the the, the baby uh, smooth smoothen. And so the product is very new and very niche. Actually, even in France, it was not that famous. Uh, but as I, as I mentioned, you know, in China, um, uh, we like niche product Total can have a very product. good potential. Okay. Yeah, it can have a very good potential. Um, so they open a, a Timo store and a Timo Global stores in two years. And they, um, after um, yeah, two years in China, um, they, the total sales now actually, 40% of that total sales actually come from the China market. So it's a very you know, good opportunity, especially for such a small brand. Um, they, their, their distributor and their, their partner really help them uh, do a lot of uh, marketing and uh, brand building uh, and education about this type of products. They went to hospitals to educate the new moms on how it could be beneficial for the baby and basically yeah their sales in china multiplied by seven after opening on chemo so this is a proof that even small niche brands can have actually a good opportunity in the china market the second example i have it's for uh cosmetic brands uh also from from france uh, maybe you heard about philorga um so philorga uh, is a french cosmetic brand mostly sold on pharmacies and they opened their first Timo Global stores in 2015 and then opened a Timo on 2018. So this is something I haven't mentioned, but it is a classic uh, development where brands start on Timo Global and then once they register the product and they're more uh, familiar with, uh, with China, they open then their Timo classic stores because it can add another sales channel. Um, if you have 700 million consumers in one platform, the more you have stores, the more you can attract uh, yeah. consumers and they can differentiate the products and have, for example, all the new products that are not yet registered in the Timo Global and on the Timo Classic, the China bestseller that have been there for, for a while. So, um, so Philoga, one thing they did very well is they used Data Bank, uh, which is a product of Alimama, uh, the, and CRM tools to really target specific audience for different products. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about the eight different profile, but it can go even deeper. So they used a lot of those data to make sure that they would target the right product to the right person. Um, and then in terms of product strategy, they had a really big calendar where they would launch new products according to new festivals. So they didn't put all the products out there right away. They did it step by step and to create some buzz every time there was a new product. So that worked really well. And now, uh, so they opened the first store in 2015, but now China actually is their biggest market, uh, even before France. And in three years, they grow by 26 times so it's also a very good uh, showcase for a brand that was not very small but like not that big in france uh, but it really grew uh, thanks to their um, entry in china and the last um, showcase i want to show you it's for a healthcare brand from the uk and this brand this case is actually very recent it's also to show you that 
um, you know, um, like brands who have who are joining like recently can also succeed. So they opened their store not even a year ago in July 2019, and this brand focuses on probiotics. And the healthcare category is growing massively in China, and I think even more since uh, the COVID-19, where people really want to take care of their body. Um, so they had a lot of different products, but the hero product was the one that would relieve um, the infections for for women. And they also have products for digestive care and family health. And um, so what I've been doing, because it was quite a small brand, is investing a lot in, in KOC and KOL. So KOL is Key Opinion Leaders and KOC is Key Opinion Consumers. So it's actually smaller bloggers that would talk to their uh, group of friends uh, about the brands. And uh, so it's been not even a year that they're in the platform, but they already have a monthly uh, GMB, GMB of about 2 million RMB, which is a very good for, for new brands yes, uh, on the platform. Impressive. Very impressive for new brands. Yes, okay. that's uh, basically the, the cases. Thanks for sharing these cases. So because we know that uh, a big sales, a big promotion date is coming, 618, which is the second biggest promotion date in China, just next to double eleven. So maybe you can yeah, give our brands or anyone who is interested to be listed on Tmall some tips, like uh, uh, how can they get prepared for this uh, big promotion date in China or if you just have some general tips for new brands who are interested to enter China. Sure. So um, as you mentioned, 618 uh, promotion is coming. So basically, China is risen by a lot of different festivals. I think uh, you guys all heard about Double Eleven, which is the biggest one, but we also have 618, we have Chinese New Year, we have Women's Day. Um, so it's very uh, um, in interesting for brands because they can uh, be very innovative and, and launch new products, but it's also a lot of preparation and that's why you need the TP, the Timo partner, which will be your partner in China and, and help you do all the operations. So um, for double eleven, because 618, it's already starting the pre-sale, so it's a bit too late for, yeah. for brands. But if a brand join in the next few months, they will be able to join double eleven. And for the boy 11, you need to start preparing at least five months in advance. Um, because, um, as I mentioned, this is really the biggest promotion of the year. And I think the, the four big things that brands should uh, focus on. The first one is the product. So what will be the product that you're going to choose? You know, which hero product you're going to push? Are you going to have uh, launch a new uh, limited edition? Are you going to do some co-branding with another brand on, on this product? And also what will be your objective on this product? Is it going to be profit or do you want to gain market share or do you want to recruit new customers? So really, you know, focus on what uh, this product part. This is the first one. Second one I would say is budget uh, because it's a big event. You need to uh, think, you know, how much you're going to allocate uh, to, to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to this campaign. And then based on that, you can do uh, like prepare your campaign. Third one is operations. Um, so you're going to have to work with your TP, the Timo partner, um, to prepare an operational plan. Um, and operational plan meaning, okay, what, uh, what will be your daily activities? Because double 11 is one day, but you actually have pre-sale uh, actually two weeks before. So during those two yeah. weeks, what are you going to do? Uh, what will be the product design? What type of offers you're going to push? Um, what uh, will be the pre-sale and after-sale services? So that's all the operations. And the last thing that is very important for brands to prepare is the marketing. Uh, so we mentioned marketing inside Tmall and outside Tmall. So inside Tmall, what are you going to do? Are you going to do live streaming? Are you going to buy keywords? Are you going to buy banners? And outside Tmall, are you going to do uh, you know, offline events, uh, some, uh, some new retail activities? Um, are you going to post on, um, on social media platform like Xiaohongshu, Little Red Book, Weibo, etc.? And you can also think uh, in terms of marketing activities, like are you going to do a membership uh, club or like a CRM activities uh, for your consumers? So all those things are really things that are important to, to know when you're preparing um, uh, a festival. And you really have to work closely with your partner on that. And if I had a few final tips to give uh, to brands if they want to enter the China market, um, the first one would be to have a dedicated team. So you will have your partner in China that we talked about, the TP, but it's very important to have someone 
uh, dedicated, uh, you know, in your company that can help the TP, uh, you know, do his work. Um, the, the brand should really give the strategy, but the, and the OTP does the operations. So having someone dedicated in your team that can be very responsive is very important. Um, in China, everything goes very, very, very fast. So, uh, for example, category managers in China could tell you, okay, if you want to join this um, this milk powder uh, campaign, you, we need to have your product and your marketing investment by tonight 6 p.m. So it's very you really have to be really reactive really really fast and that's why we um, the TPs really need the brands to be uh, like dedicated and have someone uh, to talk to. And so um, then, is it better to have a team uh, localized in China or do they can also have a team like in Europe? So when you're starting with Timo Global, you're not going to move directly a team in China. A lot of clients I am working with, they are based in Europe, but at least there is like a project manager or someone mm -hmm. actually speaking Chinese, uh, you know, yeah. based in Europe that can focus on this project and assist the project and be there for them. And then some brands, you know, after one or two years selling on Timo Global, they will actually set up a team there and uh, develop on Timo Classic. So you don't have to be based there, but it's good to have someone, uh, you know, to to deal with this uh, with this thing because there's just uh, so much um, uh, marketing and operations to do. It's very yeah. good to have someone uh, dedicated to to that project, especially if you want China to to be a market where you will grow uh, quite fast. You you kind of have to to have someone dedicated to that. Um, I think the second tip would be to find the right uh, third party or Timo partner um, and this for that we can help you. So um, uh, if you're a new brand and don't, don't have a partner in China, you can come to me or to the merchant channel and according to your product category and uh, you know to the size of your brand and what's your expectation, we can recommend you a list of four or five TPs per brand and then you can do uh, interviews with them and then they will they will prepare a, a draft of operational plan for you and then based on that you can make your choice and, and, and sign a contract with a, with a TP. Um, I haven't mentioned it before but there is two types of TP. There is distribution TP where they will buy your stock and open the store for you and you know take a margin and sell the product so they will own the stores. And second TP is service TP meaning that you are the owner of the brand of the store you're the brand so you need to pay all the fees of the platform and you will have a tp kind of like an agency that will pay every month to operate your store so these are the two models um, and then we can discuss more in detail the one that could fit better uh, your brand um, a third tip is to analyze the market and the consumers. I think we touched based on that, but there are so many different consumers in China and based on your products, uh, you know, the, the consumers in China won't be the same as the consumers you have overseas. So really spend time to analyze the market and who would be the right consumers for your products. Um, the fourth tip would be to invest in marketing, uh, especially if you're a new brand and you don't have awareness in China. Uh, the only way that people are going to know about your product is by investing in marketing. So again, uh, marketing inside Timo uh, with like live streaming and our blogs, articles, and also outside of Timo, uh, you know, on, on social media uh, like Weibo and, and, and Little Red Book and, and, and stuff like that. Um, another tip is to define your unique selling point um, because there's just so many products already available in China. Uh, I think you really have to focus on why your brand and your product is different from what is already in China. So it's really important to, to spend time on that and uh, to spend time on uh, describing why your products are so uh, different. Um, like for example, the, the product page uh, in, on Timo are so different from product page you would have overseas because they go very in detail on yeah. uh, what the product can bring you. Especially for cosmetics, you have pictures Options. of before. Exactly. So it's very important because uh, yeah, Chinese people are they 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 seek very quality products, so they will take time to read and make sure that this product is a good fit and, and good for them. And the last thing I would, uh, the last tip I would give is to think long term. Um, you know, China. If you want to succeed in China in a few months, that's not the right market. I think it's uh, you really have to to think long term and go step by step. 
So Timo Global, for example, is the first good step because you can try uh, the market, test the market. It's, it's not as costly uh, as a Timo Classic, for example, um, because you don't have to do the registration. You don't have to have a team. You don't need to have a bank account in China. It's, uh, it's, it's quite easy to set up. Uh, but once you have set up this, it's good to have a view for, okay, in one year, two years, three years, where I want to go, uh, and then have Timo Classic, maybe also offline stores. Like It's really good to think uh, long term and have a big vision uh, for China. So that's basically uh, yeah, my tips for, for brands. So um, how long do you think if, like, for example, if a new brand who wants to uh, open a shop on Timo and they find a right uh, Timo partner to do all the operations, so how long do you think they can really see some results, uh, like six months, 12 months, or two years? Yeah. So I think it really depends on the product and also if the brand already has awareness in China. Some brands, actually, they do uh, Zhongca, like a called seeding. incubation of seeding and yeah. basically before even opening Timo Global they will post they will work with uh, bloggers with KOLs uh, you will have some sales on Taba with some uh, Daigo or like C2C uh, C2C uh, shops so if a brand already has started this type of incubation and seeding it will be easier for them once they open the Timo Global store if uh, there is no awareness then it's going to take a bit more time. So I think it really depends yeah, on the product and the marketing you're investing. Uh, but I think like our goal, uh, for example, for Timo Global brand is that they reach 500,000 RMB sales in the first six months. That's the goal we have for all brands. There is brand that achieves it like right away. Some brands are taking a bit long time, a bit more time. But yeah, that's basically, uh, that's basically the goal. Reach 500,000 RMB uh, sales yes. in the first six yes. months. No, that's yeah. really the, the minimum like if they don't achieve that it's uh, you know we are going to spend some time to to see what they, they have done wrong or, or tell them to invest a bit more in marketing but yeah that's basically uh, the, the 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 numbers we're looking at to make sure that the brand can can succeed okay okay thanks for the tips so maybe we'll just um uh, going to our q and a session because we have already uh, received some questions um yeah so the first one is is from gregory um timo recently launched luxury soho so the first question is are there insights yet on how the consumers are different from those on timo luxury pavilion Yes, that's a good question. Um, so we have a dedicated team actually dedicated to, to luxury. So if you send me an email, Gregory, I will put my contacts. You can, I can introduce you to our, our luxury uh, team. Um, but basically, yeah, Timo Luxury is really for um, high luxury brands. Um, so it's not open to, to everyone. It's a bit selective. But Soho is a bit more open. So, um, yeah, you can definitely send me an email and I will introduce you to, to our team in charge of that. Uh, if you're a luxury brand, you are really welcome to, to discuss with them. Um, but, um, yeah, we have a lot of uh, European brands entering uh, this platform for sure. Yeah, I know that recently Timo was uh, partnering with uh, Netta Porter to open yeah, a exactly. flagship store for them. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and Gregory also asked the second question, where would you advise European boutique brands to open Soho or Luxury Pavilion? Soho um, is more yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to advise or say something right away. I think it really depends on your brand, your identity, and uh, you know if you're already pro selling products to China or, the, or not. So I don't want to say an answer and, and that won't be uh, fitting the, the brand. So uh, Gregory, feel free to to email me, and I will recommend you to uh, uh, to talk with my my teammate uh, Nicola. Uh, well, it actually depends where your brand is from. Actually, we have different people for different regions, but I think they would be the best person to advise uh, you okay so um next question is uh when did timo global start to operate <laughs> it was in 2013 yeah 2013. So it's been uh, it's been Seven a while already and um, I'm unfortunately not uh, allowed to share the PPT, but um, as Miro mentioned, the replay will be available so you can watch it uh, again uh, at your convenience. Yeah, you can watch the replay video, but uh, yeah, we won't be sharing the presentation. Um, so next question is, 
uh, what is the importance of KOLs in this entertainment landscape of Timor? Yeah, I think this is like a frequently asked questions by friends. Yes. Yes, yeah. KOLs is very, very important um, because um, Chinese people, they love, well, yeah, live streaming is a very big trend and live streaming, what it is basically, it's having KOLs talking about the product. So it's very important to have it in your strategy um, because if you're if you're just putting your opening your Timo Global stores, but you don't have traffic coming to your store, you won't have sales. And in order to bring traffic, you need to have some marketing activities for uh, for consumers to know about your brand. So if they read an article about a KOL on a little red book, which is like the Instagram of China, then they will see, yeah. oh wow, I, 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 this product looks nice. I will go to Timo to check if it is there. And that's how traffic will come. That's why we recommend brands to uh, invest in KOLs inside Timo and also outside, is to make sure that it can bring traffic. Traffic is the most important thing uh, for you to be, uh, to be uh, successful. So KOL is definitely very important for that. Yeah, I think especially for new brands, I think most brands are having the KOL campaigns now, but still uh, how how the outcome will be still depends on like how you choose these KOLs, how you work yes. with them, etc. So there are a lot of tricky parts in yes. this KOL campaign. Yeah. Yes. Um, we have really big uh, KOLs in China, like Li Jiaqi. They are very expensive yeah. for, for yeah. brands, but the products are good. So you, you have to to this, like to work with your operational team and TP team. Like, should we focus more on KOC? So we talked about key uh, opinion consumers. So, yeah. uh, you know, people that have less followers, but uh, the, the audience that they have, we really trust them. Uh, or do you take really big KOLs or medium KOLs? I think it really depends on, on, your, on your products and on your consumers uh you know what if your your consumer is a certain person what kols do they follow what platform do they use to 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 see reviews and based on that you can find the right uh, kol yeah and next question is um how should a company based in europe handle the ordered goods do we need to rely to a local partner or logistics in china or can we manage deliveries directly from our european hq so that's a good question. We have a different type of logistics solution, but the easiest and the cheapest one is um, to put your product in a bonded warehouse. So bonded warehouse, we have more than 20 bonded warehouse in Hong Kong and, China, and mainland China, um, where basically these are like free trade zone. So if you're a brand in Europe, you can either ship your product to the bonded warehouse or uh, the Tanya on your TP or distributor will pick them from Europe and put them in this bonded warehouse. And once they are, they are there, you don't have to worry about anything. It's a Tanya, the logistic arm of Alibaba, who will do the tax free and send and ship it directly to consumers. So it's very easy for brands. Uh, we, uh, you just have to put your product in bonded warehouse and then we take care of the logistic. If you, we, we, you can also do um, like sell it directly from your European, European HQ, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's yeah. more costly and more inconvenient. Longer time. So the bonded warehouse is, is the best solution. Yeah, it's um, faster for consumers to receive the parcel also, because yes. Chinese consumers, they have like very high requirements <laughs> to like, I, I can only wait two or three days maximum to receive my parcel even if it even even if they it you know uh it's a european seller who ships from europe yeah that's true that's for yeah. sure okay next question is um is there any section on timor related to artisans only Arts? Um, so I don't know what you mean by artisans, um, but for Timo, it's really for brands. So you, may, you need to have a trademark in order to um, open a store. If you don't have a trademark, I think Taobao is the best platform because it's C2C. So basically, you know, anyone could, uh, could, uh, could uh, open a store. But um, yeah, if you're not a brand, Timo is quite, uh, is quite difficult. Okay. Um, and next question is, does Alibaba still offer any VR shopping experience, which made headlines a few years back? I think you, you have VR. 
Yeah, we do have uh, VR. Um, VR is really part also of our new retail activities. So new retail is when you combine you know, offline and online together. So uh, you have a lot of brands who um, you know, have their own shop in China and then we use VR uh, uh, to, to broadcast products in their shop. And then the pro people who are online on the e-commerce Tmall shop, they can use VR to see how the offline shops. There's a lot of different um, uh, use cases for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you have a Tmall store and interested in doing that, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I can introduce you to the, to the right person. Yeah, and I also see some beauty brands use uh, VR to like you can try you can try the whole makeup online yeah. to see like yeah, yeah. which date is more suitable for you or something like that. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Next question is: um, Is Tima Global a good strategy for cruelty free brands interested in entering China? It's actually, <laughs> pretty totally. different. actually, the main advantage of Tima Global is that if your brand uh, especially for cosmetics when you cannot do animal testing it's the only platform you can actually use like cross border to um to actually you know alter the china market so definitely um, we have a lot that's why actually cosmetic is one of the biggest category it's because so many brands uh, you know don't want to do animal testing and that's the only way they can sell to chinese consumers so definitely yeah, only go cross -border. Uh, use the global for yeah for cross border yeah uh, next question is, is it better to start with Timo Overseas Fulfillment or even TDI before investing in opening Timo Global Flagship? So uh, that's a good question. Uh, TDI, I would remove it for the beginning of your strategy because TDI is for best sellers. So TDI yeah. would be for, you know, after Famous one brand. or two years in China, exactly. If you have two, one or two Hero SKUs that are selling super well, then TDI team would buy those SKUs and sell them in the sub channels inside of uh, Timo Global. Um, TOF, it can be interesting for your brand as well. Um, the only thing is that with TOF, you won't be able to, let's say, build your brand image because it won't be a store only for your brand. So I think I would first start with a Timo a global flagship store because it can help you, you know, build uh, your, your, your brand image and have uh, uh, consumers know about your products. And in parallel, or maybe a bit after, use TOF to test a few more SKUs. But for TOF, um, um, like I would say 80% are brands that are already have awareness in China and only 20% are brands that are not uh, famous in China. So even if a consumer sees your product in TOF, but you don't have a, a store or you don't have marketing activities inside the platform, if they don't know about your brand, they won't buy the product. So I think investing first in Timo Global flagship stores is quite interesting yeah but TOF, TOF, yeah it's like list your products in a in a Timo store in a like Timo owned store so you will yes. be with all other brands and if you don't have any like awareness uh, you still need to do marketing by yourself so it's the yes. same like you have a flagship store uh, instead exactly. of uh, for a flagship store you can do all the operation you can manage your own like mm -hmm. uh, yeah branding everything by yourself and one thing that could be interesting for, for TOF is if you're a big retailer, uh, because with TOF, you can connect with IPI model. So if you connect with, if you're like a big I don't know, toy retailer or fashion retailer, and you have like more than 5,000 SKUs, I think TOF can be a good model because you can actually connect uh, with Tmall and have all your uh, SKUs uh, put in the TOF uh, shops of Tmall. So that could be interesting. So it's really case by case according to, to the brand and, and how much product they have. So feel free to, to reach out to me uh, so we can discuss a bit more in details. Okay, uh, next is um, to which extent can European companies send their product to the warehouse in free trade zone when they do not have Chinese certificates like CCC, H HS code, CFDA, etc. It's actually mm -hmm. doesn't require CFDA. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the thing with cross-border e-commerce. Your products are like the one you sell in Europe. You don't need to review your packaging or if you sell to Timo Classic, you need to have a Chinese uh, uh, like, um, like a notice and, and, and packaging. But for cross-border, you don't need to do that. Your products go from how they are in Europe 
to the bonded warehouse and then it goes to Chinese consumers. So you don't need to have any certificate and CFDA. Um, there is a few uh, major uh, cross-border rules for specific products, like for example, meat. Meat is not yet allowed just in cross-border general uh, rules that you cannot import mix meat in China. And there's mm -hmm. some also electronic products that you cannot uh, import just because it's uh, the main rules. But besides that, um, you know, you don't need any specific uh, requirements or uh, registrations or certificates to do cross-border commerce. Okay, okay. Um, I think that's it for all of the questions and thanks Chloe uh, for joining our webinar and if you have any other questions or any other queries you can just contact Chloe uh, directly by scanning her QR code or send her an email. So thank you everyone for um, joining our webinar and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.